welcome to Lights Camera Texas. Our guest for today is Alan Robinson. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. What is studs? Or is there like different varieties of it? Like, for someone who doesn't know, what are studs in general? Well, to be employed as a stunt person, uh, stunts are, they're, they're a variety of aspects. Um, the stunt person is hired by the stunt coordinator. So there's always a stunt coordinator. He hires the stunt people. As a stunt person, you be, may be hired to double one of the actors. You may be hired to be an indie stunt person. Indie is nondescript. So you're, you're a, a patron on the sidewalk. You're a soldier. You're a police officer. Um, just nondescript. Um, you may be a stunt actor where you have lines and you do your own stunts and then there's a then there's stunt rigging as a stunt rigger you're still working as a stunt person but you're rigging the stunts maybe testing them so you can put the actor into it um, but rigging is a thinking man's game and it involves you know engineering and i love that and then going back as a stunt coordinator you hire the stunt people, the appropriate people. You work directly underneath the, the director and producers. And most stunt coordinators, or a lot of stunt coordinators, naturally go on to become second unit directors. Oh, really? So the natural progression is you become a stunt person, stunt coordinator, and then the second unit director. Second unit, you're directing the action. Mm -hmm. So you're the guy directing that cool action team. Ah. How did you get started in this career? Uh, I got started actually by entering an ad in the newspaper. Um, it stated, stunt men wanted, okay. will train. And I was in my mid-twenties and it was a, a, a job at a theme park in Atlanta, outside of Atlanta. And I got hired as a gunfighter getting shot up a balcony 14 times a day. What? And, um, and from there I been pursuing it ever since. Like did you kind of know what you're getting yourself into or you're just like jumping with both feet? You know I didn't know I just knew it was fun at the time I was in my mid-20s kind of dropped out of college didn't have a real direction and uh, I just wanted to do something fun I didn't get paid a lot but I was having fun mm -hmm. and then I looked at you know hey I'll do it I'll do more of this because I'm really having fun with it and then I started learning about it going hey I can make a career out of it and um, that's how it got started. What are some of the projects you've been in or um, got to do? I worked as Clint Eastwood stunt double in The Mule and oh, uh, that was a I probably probably did the least in that job but it was the most memorable. Okay, and it's a plenty Eastwood. Yes, yeah. I want to act to him so bad but okay go on. Yeah mm -hmm. so it was my second time working with him I, uh, he directed a movie called Sully with Tom Hanks, and I doubled Tom Hanks and Sully. Okay. So I worked with Clint on that as well. And, and so Sully was a pretty, you know, it was a great film to be part of. But gosh, you know, starting back, one of my first big ones uh, was Psycho Four, and I doubled Psycho. Anthony I, Psycho. Okay. It was the fourth one, the last one for Anthony Perkins, the original okay. Norman Bates, and okay. I doubled Norman Bates, and. Um, then I worked on Forrest Gump. Oh, uh, you did! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I doubled Tom in that. I was running, jumping off a shrimp boat, carrying Lieutenant Dan. Have you broken anything? It broke my heart in my first marriage. <laughs> and, um, no. <laughs> um, well, you know, I like to say stunts are like playing football. Mm -hmm. If you play long enough, you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully it's not that. Um, you know, I've broken uh, many bones, uh, but to me worse than bones are joints, like blowing out a knee or a shoulder. Those to me are, are harder to recover from, but probably the worst would be hearing loss. Oh, not from broken like all bones. The yeah, okay. gunshots and explosions. And when I was early in my career, I, I didn't need earplugs because I'm tough, I can handle it. Not smart. <laughs> yeah, so would you no. recommend making sure when you're starting out to have earplugs? Yeah, or? starting out, you protect your ears. You're not invincible. You're a human. And, you know, that goes away. You can't repair that. You can repair broken bones or rebuild a, a joint, but 
you, you can't you know repair your hearing. How do you? How does one get started in this career? Like, how do they find it, or how do they get into it? Like, if someone really wants to do it, where can they start? Well, um, everybody that's uh, a successful stunt person working as a stunt person comes from a different background. So there's not one direct way. If there was a if there was a clear cut way, everybody would be successful in the business. People come from different backgrounds. Some people come from a gymnastics background, racing cars, skydiver, martial arts. There's a variety of backgrounds. Um, so uh, I, the best background is gymnastics. Okay. So you have a basic sense of aerial sense. Because your bread and butter starting off as a stunt person is going to be uh, smaller falls, tripping over things, falling, being thrown over things, to have a sense of aerial awareness. And you get that through gymnastics or sports related to that. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a gymnastics background, or if you're looking into it, gymnastics is the way to go. Or if you also have a sports background, then you're kind of in there, but you still kind of, I would say, need a little fine tuning of aerial awareness. The background in gymnastics is really important. It helps with the basics of stunts. Okay. Um, but it's not the only one. Um, the more you know about everything, the more skills you have, the more you work. So um, you're always learning new skills and, and fine tuning them. But if I had to give you know advice to an early or young stunt person, it would be gymnastics. How often do you train as a stunt? You train every day, once a week. Like, what's your typical? Well. If you're asking me as a nearly 60 year old that's been doing this for 33 years, um, it's going to be a lot different than if I was just getting into business, being a stuntman for a couple years. It's, it's a whole different game. Okay. So, uh, as a younger or newer stunt person, um, you're, 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 your full time job, if you want to be good at this, you've got to treat it as a full time job. Your full time job is going to be doing something related to stunts. So, training at the gym, uh, socializing, meeting other stunt people, getting people to know you, learning new skills, studying the craft of filmmaking. Um, uh, I like to say, you know, five days a week when I was a younger stunt person, I was doing something related to stunts. What is the most challenging thing about your job? Challenging? Well, that's what I like about stunts. It's always challenging, and I think you should always be challenged. Um, uh, I like the challenge, the mental challenge, because you have to have mental focus. Um, mental focus means you have to cancel out a lot of exterior things and focus on, that, focus on the business at hand. Um, some of the other challenges can be, if you did a stunt and it may be particularly painful, it may hurt, to be able to go and do it a second take, a third take, a fourth take, when you, your body's going, no, that hurt the first time, why do I have to do it again? So you have to mentally block that out. What does a typical week look like as a stuntman? For me now, um, riding my horses or um, playing with cars, um, taking care of my farm. I, um, a typical week for me is, you know, I, I do search and rescue. I volunteer with that, so I'm training with search and rescue. Um, I. Uh, I do at least one or two things re stunt related now, but very little now because uh, you know I've been doing it so long that um, you get to you pick know, and choose. Well, I do get to pick and choose a bit, but I do look at the trades. I read the trades and I see what films and TV shows are out there that maybe hey, I'll make a good fit for that show. So How about a typical week for someone starting out or someone that's fairly. Well, I, um, I like to say you should be training all the time. Be on top of your game, always learning something new. If you only know how to ride horses, you only get job jobs riding horses. So the more you know, the more you work. You know how to do fire, you do that. You know how to do falls, you do that. You know how to you know, crash and drive cars, you do that. Skydiving, scuba diving, um, the you know, the more versed you are, the better a stunt person you're going to be. What do you like about being a stuntman? Well, back to what I like. I like I like the travel. I like the people. I like the challenge. Um, 
what I don't like, oh, maybe some of the politics inside of it, but that's probably everywhere in life. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like, um, God, there's not much I don't like because it's a pretty pretty cool job. Any advice for someone start wanting to start out as a stylist? Women start, man, what advice would you give them? What advice? Don't do it. Don't do it? Why? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would say, here's my advice. You gotta go to, into it with the right mindset. And that is uh, that you're, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of sacrifice, time, money. One of the biggest things is look at it as, as you're getting into it for the long haul. This is what you're gonna do. I like to say getting into stunts is like going to college. It may take you four years before you start making a living at it because you're learning. We make the money of doctors and lawyers and, and and, and it, it, they had to go to years and years of school. So it's kind of, it, you know. It the longer like, it pays off. Yeah, so it, the first few years you just shut up and listen and, and just get a few jobs here and there. Uh, then then you'll start making it if you're continuing on that course there. So I always say learn as much about everything because it always has something to relate to it. Scuba diving has something to do with stunts. What? You know how to be safe. You're not 30 feet below the water and do the wrong thing because yeah. bad things happen. So those skills of keeping yourself safe help you in stunts. It's a, it's a mindset because we're, we're really the safety, safety on a set. We're a safety valve. What are some misconceptions about your job? Mm, misconceptions. Uh, that we're crazy and we'll do anything. Um, not true. If I think I'm going to get seriously hurt, kill somebody, hurt, injure, uh, damage the wrong equipment, I'm not going to do it. So we're, we're calculated. We take calculated risk. Uh, the other misconception is that we don't get hurt. Like, oh, you're tough. You can handle this. You know, you're a stuntman. Well, I bleed and break just like everybody else. Um, but some of my training will help me to absorb the fall. I know how to protect myself, you know. To, but, you know, people think that we're, we're daredevils and we'll, we'll do anything and we're crazy. And it's just quite the opposite. We're not crazy and we won't do everything. What is the craziest thing you've done as a stuntman? The craziest thing, gosh, you know, you know, there's, there's a lot of them are and, and my memory, you know, the things that pop up are crazy. Uh, one, uh, for a movie called The Kingdom, I got um, the opportunity to do these big car crashes. In the movie The Kingdom, I drove the hero car and I did uh, three cannon rolls. I did, in other words, I did this stunt three different times. A cannon roll is where your vehicle has a cannon mounted in the car pointing downwards. And when you drive your car, when you want it to turn over, you take the car, slide it sideways, push the button, fires a projectile down into the pavement, lifts the car up, and it tumbles down the street. Very violent, and it's a it's a it's a ride, but it, it can usually be a headbanger. You may see some stars if you remember the ride. And I did that three times for that film, thus um, nominating me for a Screen Actors Guild Award, a World Taurus Award, um, and it was pretty big. The first time I first time we shot that, there was 15 cameras rolling, so there was no pressure. You know. <laughs> no pressure, 15. <laughs> and then early in my stunt career, I, 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 um, I did a bungee jump from 3,000 feet out of a hot air balloon. And uh, after bouncing, then I cut loose, fell another 800 feet, and parachuted down. You cut loose yourself? or yes. Okay, just making sure like nothing bad happened. Do you have oh, no, no, it was all designed, all okay. was planned, but it was... Um, it was it was a pretty big event. There's a lot that could go wrong. There's a lot I had to test. There's there's important things I could not test in theory. So if you take a bungee cord and you cut loose, or if you take a rubber band and stretch it and you release that rubber band, it usually comes back and snaps where mm -hmm. you're holding it, right? Imagine what was a big big bungee. big bungee cord, and if this thing came back and hit the balloon. It would take it out of the sky, and it would be bad. So I came up with a uh, making a parachute. A, a small parachute, but large enough for it, that was mounted on the end of the bungee cord. So as I fell away, that bungee cord was accelerating back upwards, and the parachute worked in reverse. But there's uh, no so way I could test it. <laughs> you know, I had to go in theory, and it all worked fine, but it was one of those things I like to test, test, test. Mm -hmm. I don't like surprises, 
you know, I'm going to walk home at the end of the day. You know, <laughs> you know only one key. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a couple of big ones there that I can think of. Probably. What else would you like to tell people or someone that's interested in trying to be a stunt person? Well, it's, it's, the, it's the best job you could have, but it's not without a lot of sacrifice. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of downtime. It's a, it's a mental game, constantly training. But if you're into it, you love that stuff. It, you know, people who don't like to work out and people who don't like to, to work hard at something, you know, it's not probably not, not for them. You know, and I, and I respect that. It's not for everybody. But if you want to, it's the best job you could have. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I hope these tips helped. Hey, when the end credits roll, will you have lived the life you want to? <laughs>